Kaplan. I'm Tanya Rivero. President Trump's annual financial disclosure form shows he reimbursed his former attorney, Michael Cohen, for a 2016 payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels. The government's ethics watchdog says the president should have reported the payment last year. Mr. Trump denied knowledge of the transaction as recently as last month. Paula Reed has more. On the same page as the president's bold signature is a reference to the previously undisclosed payment to Mr. Cohen. It's the first time President Trump has formally admitted reimbursing his personal attorney, Michael Cohen, for the $130,000 he paid adult film star Stormy Daniels to keep silent about her alleged affair with the president. Mr. Trump has previously denied knowledge of the payment, including last month aboard Air Force One. However, earlier this month, the president's new attorney, Rudy Giuliani, told Fox News the president paid Cohen back. Having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman 130000 I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. Along with the financial disclosure form, the Office of Government Ethics today sent a letter to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, flagging the update in case it was relevant to any inquiry the Justice Department may be pursuing. What is the significance of this letter? To me, that means that the Office of Government Ethics believes there is a potential crime here and it really should be investigated. And Paula Reed joins me now from the White House. Paula, you spoke with President Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, on Wednesday. What did he have to say about the president reimbursing Michael Cohen and not being forthcoming about it on prior occasions? Well, he had quite a bit to say about this, but his key point was he kept trying to drive home the idea that this had nothing to do with the campaign, that this was a, quote, Cohen expense and not a campaign expense. But, of course, I asked him, how can you reconcile the president's statements aboard Air Force One that we just saw in that package saying he had no knowledge about this payment or where the money came from? with today's disclosures the president clearly signed. Mr. Giuliani only said that the president didn't have the documents in front of him at the time, uh, and at the time he wasn't representing him, sort of dismissed it. But I doubled down, Tanya, and followed up and said, how is it that you can't remember buying the silence of a former porn star alleged ex-lover in the days leading up to the campaign. Again, Giuliani tried to dismiss it. He said it really wasn't a significant matter and that $130,000 gives you a sense of just how not significant it was. Giuliani said, quote, you would never settle a significant legal matter for $130,000. And, and Paula, what do you also make of Giuliani saying a sitting president cannot be indicted? Well, this is some good news for the president because Giuliani said that in his conversations with the Office of Special Counsel, they have indicated that they will adhere to an opinion that's at the Justice Department that says you cannot indict a sitting president. Because at this point, when the Mueller investigation wraps up, everything will be handed over to the Deputy Attorney General, and he has choices. He can try to indict the president if there is uh, evidence of criminal, criminal wrongdoing. He can hand it off to Congress to handle, or he can do nothing. And the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein has also said that he believes in, in abiding by that opinion that you cannot indict a sitting president. So this is some good news for the president, and it's clear why Giuliani is floating it today, because it takes a lot of the attention off of all of these questions about financial disclosures. Now, going back to this payment, you mentioned that the Office of Government Ethics flagged this payment to Rod Rosenstein. What did you make of that letter? Well, we have to note the letter is dated today, addressed to the Deputy Attorney General of the United States. It's currently overseeing the Russia probe, and it makes reference to the fact that the president has now disclosed this payment and uh, just says, hey, Justice Department, if this is relevant to any inquiry you have, just wanted to flag it for you. Now, some people were up in arms about this, saying this is as close to a request to investigate as you can possibly get. But we've spoken with the Office of Government Ethics, and they've said, I'm reading here from their statement, this should not be interpreted as a criminal referral, that they were simply providing information to the Justice Department and giving them what they had. Giuliani also noted that, look, if they wanted to make a criminal referral, they would have made a criminal referral, and that this is a generic letter. And in reading the letter, it does appear that perhaps this uh, office was trying to just protect itself in what is clearly such a controversial, contentious issue. And, and Paula, what crimes could the Justice Department investigate here? 
There's a few things. First of all, they could look at whether the president made false statements by failing to disclose this payment any sooner. They could also look at whether the money Daniels received in exchange for her silence, whether or not that was actually part of an effort to impact the campaign, to, to not bring that story out in the wake of the Access Hollywood tape. If that is the case, then it should have been disclosed under campaign finance laws. But to be clear, at this point, there is no indication that there is an active, open criminal investigation into the president on this matter. Paula Reed at the White House. Thank you.